Now coming on to the lifestyle factors that can affect fertility. Firstly, uh, smoking and tobacco use. I think there's uh, hardly any surprise here. Uh, uh, pregnant mothers have been asked to stay off um, cigarettes and tobacco use since time memorial. Uh, it can decrease the chances of fertility and can increase the complications that come with pregnancy. Uh, there have been reports that um, there might be uh, intrauterine growth retardation or uh, you know children might be born with certain learning disabilities if the mother is on uh, is consuming um, cigarettes or tobacco while sorry for that while she's pregnant. Again, similarly, alcohol, I think um, it's equally as bad as tobacco and cigarettes. Um, excessive alcohol consumption can impact the fertility of the people trying to conceive, and it can increase the risks of complications of pregnancy, exactly like how cigarettes and other tobacco products do. Diet. Now, uh, I think I'm not being very specific here but uh, diet is something that you know a balanced diet is important for everyone and even more so for people who are trying to conceive there's no rocket science to this if you put in good food into your bodies you're going to have good outcomes when it comes to pregnancy and fertility issues um a good balanced diet with a lot of green vegetables a lot of vitamins a lot of protein, um, you know, it's going to boost the chances of fertility and would increase uh, the chances of an infertility treatment also if the patient is trying to conceive uh, using infertility treatments. Lastly, stress. I think stress is something that's been looked, uh, that's not really been stressed upon. <laughs> Sorry for that wordplay there. Uh, a lot. I think long-term stress can impact uh, the hormones that regulate fertility great by a great deal. It's important to talk to a specialist who can, um, you know, try and manage your stress before you try to um, uh, try to conceive. Now, let's look at some of the risk factors that can impact pregnancy and fertility. So, first factor that's going to be there is age. I think this has been stressed upon quite a lot. Um, the <clears throat> chances of pregnancy and fertility treatments working reduced drastically once uh, the age of the couple starts increasing. Um, in our field, we consider an age of 35 for the woman as the cutoff. Um, 35 and above were considered advanced maternal age. And this could be one of the factors why would their uh, results not be as optimal as someone, say, a 25-year-old or a 30-year-old would have. Um, so, yeah, on women, age definitely uh, decreases the chances of fertility, in increases the chance of chances of complications like IUGR, low birth weight, um, gestational diabetes, gestational hypertension, uh, preeclampsia, eclampsia during the pregnancy. On men, although we don't have any cutoffs as such, and you know, uh, we've seen successful pregnancies with men as old as 50 years, 55 years old, but uh, we've noticed that sperm counts tend to reduce after 45 in males the sperm quality definitely reduces post 45, 50. This could be due to a variety of reasons. This could be due to their lifestyle choices. Um, but age definitely is an impact on male as well. Right. So after we've covered age, I think obesity or the, uh, you know, the body weight is another important factor when uh, we consider its impact on pregnancy and fertility. Like I said, if um, a female who's trying to conceive 
if she is obese, there's going to be increased uh, pregnancy complications like gestational diabetes, hypertension. Even if uh, you know the pregnancy does go on, it can lead to miscarriages, and sometimes it can also lead to stillbirths. With obesity, again, um, for men, there's not a lot of uh, various factors that it can impact. So sperm quality is the only thing that's that that we are going to look at multiple times here. Obesity again, um, the sperm quality is going to reduce if the person who's trying to conceive is not healthy. Um, most of our obese patients, we've had to rely on surgical methods of sperm retrieval. Um, even if they're able to collect sperm naturally, uh, you know, without the need of a surgery. The quality of sperm for these people generally tends to be on the lower side. Um, so all this would affect the quality of the sperm as well. Again, um, next would be sexually transmitted infections. So this could be gonorrhea or um, Kissing's disease. So all these conditions, they can cause pelvic inflammatory diseases. Again could lead to infertility, but if treated well in advance, um, these people can have pregnancies naturally as well. Uh, the impact of STDs on men, uh, I think they've been known to cause inflammation of testicles, um, of the entire reproductive or uh, tract. In fact, uh, these can impact the sperm production and the quality again. Lastly, substance abuse. So, uh, you know, the this includes all your alcohol, your drugs, uh, tobacco. Like we've already touched upon this before, it can cause fertility issues, can cause complications of pregnancy, like miscarriages, stillbirths, and it cause can cause uh, developmental delays in the children if they are able to conceive. Um, substance abuse. There's been more than enough data to show that there is a definite decrease in sperm count, sperm quality. So that is how th those are the four major risks that can impact pregnancy and fertility. I'm sure I would have missed out on a couple of them as well, but these are the four most important factors. Right. So uh, we've discussed the various impacts of all the factors that we've looked at before. Now let's look at the role of diet and exercise in fertility. How does diet and maintaining a healthy weight and exercising can help in fertility? So a diet that is rich in antioxidants, proteins, healthy fats, it boosts the chances of fertility. It increases the chances of a healthy pregnancy. Uh, I don't think um, this is anything new. I think, uh, you know, this is common knowledge these days. Uh, a good healthy diet that is rich in protein, that is free of excess fats, that doesn't have a lot of junk, um, that doesn't have a lot of processed sugar. It's generally going to be good for everyone, not just people who are trying to conceive. Healthy weight. Okay. So, uh, although there's limited data on this, but I think this is more of a personal experience that patients who tend to be, uh, you know, healthy compared to more obese patients, they tend to do well. Um, if their BMIs are under the normal limits, their time to pregnancy, their um, you know chances of having a live birth that has no complications, they're way more than a uh, obese patient. Um, and it goes the other way as well. I think if the person if a person is severely underweight, that can affect the 
fertility and the success of the various infertility treatments that are there uh, that are available right now. Exercise. Again, uh, there's no rocket science to this. I think moderate physical exercise helps control weight. This can help regulate all the hormones present in the body. It can improve the chances of fertility. It can improve the chances of infertility treatments as well. Um, excessive, you know, any um, doing anything in excess is not really that good for the body. Uh, be it a diet that is rich in, it's excessively rich in protein or, you know, if someone's obsessed about their body weight. So similarly, I think excessive exercise can in ways impact fertility and can cause menstrual irregularities.